So one key feature or one thing that you need to remember is the differences and similarities between anaplasia and dysplasia. So anaplasia cells, they are pleomorphic, which means they're marked in variation in size and shape. This is just a review, but repetition brings conviction, so I will repeat it. The nuclei are extremely hyperchromic and large. They're dark stained. The nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio is 1 to 1 instead of 1 to 4 or 1 to 6. Giant cells may appear, which are monocytes and macrophages fused together. Anaplastic nuclei are variable and bizarre in size and shape. Mitoses are often numerous and distinctly atypical. My totic spindles appear as tripolar or quadrupolar. Anaplastic cells usually fail to develop recognizable patterns of orientation to one another, and they may grow in sheets and lose their structures that are benefit to the community of cells, such as glandular or gland formations and stratified squamous architecture. That's what anaplasia means. These are the characteristics of anaplasia. What are the characteristics of dysplasia? Dysplasia is dys orderly but non-neoplastic proliferation. So these cells are proliferating and there is disorder but it is non-neoplastic. The cell DNA is not mutated, it's just disorderly proliferation. Dysplasia is encountered principally in epithelial. So an epithelial lining, remember that epithelium is lining of all the body tissues and structures, so epithelium Dysplasia usually happens in epithelial cells. It is a loss of uniformity of individual cells and in their architectural orientation. So there's pleomorphism and often hyperchromic nuclei, which is exactly the same as anaplasia. And there is considerable architectural anarchy or rebellion or lawlessness. They are just a free-for-all, going wherever they want. However, these are big caveats here. Dysplasia without certain qualification does not indicate cancer, and dysplasias do not necessarily progress to cancer. Dysplasias, however, can be what they call pre-malignant, or where they will develop into cancers. But just because there's dysplasia, that doesn't mean that there's, there is a cancer and it doesn't mean that it will progress to cancer. It can, but it doesn't always necessarily mean that. And if you see mild to moderate dysplasia, it can revert back to normal. Because remember cells adapt to stress. We talked about this in the first uh, few videos on the pathology playlist, is that cells adapt to stress via hypertrophy, which means one cell becomes just a bigger cell, hyperplasia, which means the cells are responding to the stress so they don't die, and so these cells go under hyperplasia, which means they just make a lot more of the original cell, atrophy, which means they shrink, or metaplasia, where one cell, let's say you have columnar epithelial cells, and we use this in the example of a smoker in his lungs, you have columnar epithelial with little cilia on top, and in order for the smoke that comes in in a smoker's lung, it's very toxic to these columnar epithelial. So what happens is it turns into a stratified, stratified squamous epithelial cells. So there's like layers. Okay, so that's metaplasia, is one cell type converting into another cell type. And maybe there's dysplasia. Dysplasia can happen because cells are trying to adapt to stress so they don't die. So this is dysplasia. And dysplasia can mean carcinoma in situ. Situ just means in its place or in its place of origin. So a carcinoma in situ can be referred to as dysplasia. And so we see here a low power view shows the entire thickness so this is the epithelial here, epithelium, is replaced by atypical dysplastic cells. There is no orderly differentiation. See how they're kind of all, you know, these cells are going this way, these cells are more spaced out, these cells are going this way. 
There's no orderly differentiation of squamous cells. And the basement membrane is intact. See this dysplasia? This type of growth has not gone down into deeper into the layers of the tissue. It, this, the basement membrane is intact. A malignant carcinoma or a malignant tumor will go down. It will invade into this area, but the basement membrane is still intact. And so there's no tumor in the subepithelial stroma. So this is just a blown up view of this. You have high power view of another region that shows failure of normal differentiation. These cells, it's not normally how a squamous epithelium looks. There's cellular polyomorphism, which is differences in size and shape. You know, these shapes are here, these shapes are more round. And numerous mitotic features extending towards the surface. Now this is important here. Because in normal, like say example the skin, you have a basal layer. You have basal cells here. And as these cells become aged, the cell, they replicate. And so this cell will move up and replicate towards two daughter cells. Okay, so what happens is then this cell will move up, and then the, the then you have two more basal cells down here, and so these are the cells that are active. These are the cells that are dividing, usually just this basal layer. And as these are the cells divide, these cells get pushed up, and so they go up and up and up, and then they slough off. That's how your epidermis usually works. So if you see mitotic division in cells that are clear up here, that's abnormal, that's dysplasia. And you can see this cell right here. Remember what we were talking about mitosis, how you look for mitotic figures or cells that undergo in mitosis? They're elongated, darkened blobs inside the nucleus or inside the cell. So that one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. So these are mitotic cells that are close right here's another one that are close to the surface of this the surface of this epithelial that is bizarre and the attack basement membrane below is not seen in this section section so this basement membrane here is intact so this is a dysplasia rather than a neoplasm that's it we'll see you in the next video